the weekly industry angel podcast hears from business leaders and entrepreneurs who share their stories and that all important light bulb moment this can inspire us all and maybe scratch that itch and kickstart that idea that keeps you awake at night Welcome to episode 51 of the Industry Angel. I hope you guys are ready for another amazing guest. I promise this week the guest won't be as quick fire as Brian Fanzo from episode 50. I'm glad you enjoyed Brian. He's like a million miles an hour, isn't he? Uh, I, I mean, uh, my mind is like a Twitter feed, but Brian, wow, he's just the master of talk. So I'm glad you enjoyed him. Today's guest is going to be a bit slower than that, so you don't have to like slow the podcast speed down, which you might have done with Brian. All's fine with me and Far North. Thanks for asking. Thanks for your emails. I've enjoyed meeting some great teams this week or so. I've been delivering the Business Model Masterclass. And if you'd like to spend a day with me and I'd love to spend a day with you and your team, then head over to far-north.com and there's details on there where you can see what we get up to. We've got another extended episode for you today, so I'm not going to blab too much. We're just going to dive straight in to this week's guest. Today we have the global keynote speaker talking customer service and marketing, Jeff Ram. Welcome to the Industry Angel, Jeff. Thank you, Ian, and hello to everybody. Well, thanks to modern technology, Jeff, we can be connected from literally... 4.1 4.1 miles away. I, I don't know what to say, Ian. It's um, it's astounding. I mean, we could actually have met for a coffee, but, you know, why, why do that when we can sit in our shorts and, and play about with a computer? Yeah, how do you know what I'm wearing? Have I got my webcam on still? I, I, your window's open, I can see. I can... Holy smoke. Right, okay, I, I best pull something else on because uh, the shorts on the top, but nothing. Oh, right, right, anyway. So, <laughs> Jeff, you're one of our own. You know, we're proud that you're literally traveling the universe, talking all things customer service, with that beautiful northeast twang. How does that go down when you're talking globally? Does everyone get you? It's really interesting, Ian. It's, uh, I think anywhere in the UK, the northeast accent, as, as we both have, and I, I, I apologize for anybody listening overseas who think you know we need subtitles, but the northeast accent, certainly in the UK, goes down a storm. Um, there are certain accents and certain dialects in the United Kingdom which people love or, or people don't tend to like, uh, but we have ones that, that that people actually do love. But when I <laughs> further, I was going to say, don't name them because I can just see the the, the, the uh, figures just. <laughs> we know who they are, Birmingham. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway, oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, but when I go further afield, when I talk further afield uh, at conferences and events, and whether that be Ecuador or Japan or Iran or anywhere in between. Um, in, you know, it's, it's not necessarily your dialect. It's the passion in your voice. It's the enthusiasm for your subject and your stories that you tell. And, of course, when I speak internationally, I'll slow things down a little bit. My pitch will be a little bit different. But there'll still be the odd little northeast word. It'll come out my mouth. It's good that you said passionate because I've seen you speak. Jeff, you, Jeff, you are very passionate. and. I mean, you've been doing this, what, 15 years now? Yeah, but well, I've been self-employed for 15 years. For right. the first seven years of my business life, I was 95% consultant. And I was doing, I was literally 5% of my business was professional speaking. And I made the decision some eight years ago, you know, as we all do in our business life from time to time, you know, what, what do I want to do? And what do I foresee, you know, what, what would I love to be doing in you know, in the next 30 years? And it literally was. I, I was. I just love. With I just love speaking. I love delivering. I love sharing ideas and 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 on that stage with audiences. And I said, you know, professional speaking is something that I really want to do. So eight years ago, I made the leap. I created the website. I, I started writing books, and I started to push that side of of my business and ta- started to market that heavily. And as I sit here with you now, you know. And, and speaking with everybody listening in around the world, uh, my business is 100% speaking. This is all I do and 0% consultancy. And the, the, the shift, you know, from 95 to 5 to 0, 100, do you know what? I'll be honest with you, hand on heart, I never saw it coming. Uh, but I'm absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted. 
Well, that's really interesting. So did it go from, you know, like 50-50 and then over to 100? Do you yeah. know, did you drip yeah. feed it? In? Yeah. So, slowly but surely. And I think it's, it's interesting because you, you are... In, in, the, in people's eyes, in clients, customers' minds, you are what you put out there. And it's interesting because even if you look at, um, if I look at my original business cards, Ian, you know, my, my, if, I, if I give you a business card, my business is called Mercury Marketing. And my title, because we've always got to have a title, it's, it's not like these chief creative officers that we have now. Oh, no, these I'm going back to original days of, of some years ago. So I was consultant and speaker. So when you pass that card on, people see you as a consultant first and you do a bit of speaking. And yeah. that shift eight years ago, and it's a tiny little brand shift, but it's a massive thing in the eyes of the in the eyes of the client. All of a sudden you pass over a card that says speaker and consultant. And people suddenly know that you that what's your for, uh, what's your first and foremost area of expertise. And of course now if I hand anything out now, it's just speaker, it's nothing else. Um, so you are what you put out there, which is an interesting scenario for anybody listening on this show who says, you know, I want to go off in a slightly different direction. Do I do I have to rebrand? Do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? Um, just subtle little changes. But I think it's also in your, in, your, in your own mind when people say, what do you do? I say, I'm a professional speaker. I can do consultancy and I do do consultancy, but it's not my prime business. Um so yeah, it went, went from 95 to 5 to 70 to 30 to all the way to the numbers. And I would say for the last four years, maybe it's even four and a half, maybe it's even five, it's been pretty much 100% speaking. That's really interesting to know the kind of man behind the mask because obviously, you know, we see people speak and I think it's really interesting to see sort of where you've come from. And I don't, I hope you don't mind, but I'd love to delve a little bit more into that. So I'm fine, yeah. Cool. Did you, let's have a think, how did you start? So the 5%, what was that? You know, talking in small business forums or universities or? Well, yeah, no, good, good question. The the 5% was basically in the northeast of England, uh, where, where you and I are from. So I was speaking for the Chambers of Commerce. Uh, Barclays were quite heavy into events back in the day. So I would do events for small business, um, local business enterprises, like say, Tedco and and people like that, little you know, organizations putting on events for small business. I did a couple of university gigs, but it was all very much northeast. In fact, the furthest I'd ever been was Carlisle. Oh, uh, nosebleed going across to the north. <laughs> um, and oh, how long have we got on this show? Because this could take ages. But I, I just need to <laughs> tell you, and it's it's not a story that you'll see on any video on my YouTube channel. It's not on my website and it, you'll only ever see it if I speak in colleges or universities and it's exclusive uh, it is just, yes we'll keep it quiet whatever you do don't, <laughs> don't share this with anybody <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and condense this story down so I'm doing my stuff I'm putting my stuff out there and I'm really trying to build a brand and my aim is to go national I want to speak in London I want to speak in Birmingham. I want to speak in all these places. And when you start off, you know, this is what you want to do. You want to become that person or, or that job, that thing that you strive for. And I put everything everything into it. And I joined a, an organization called the Professional Speaking Association, uh, the PSA here in the UK. And it was at the time when I was, this is the decision I made. I joined the PSA and I met some fabulous, fabulous people and they've become you know, some of my very best friends. And that, that organization has given me everything. And I wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't for them. And I joined that and I started to get out there. And I started to go to these PSA regions. They have they had about three or four regions at the time in the northeast, the northwest, the, the in the south. And I was I was delivering my marketing talk to speakers and help to help speakers market them market their business. Fast forward a few months. I got a phone call. It was Friday afternoon, just about 10 past three in the afternoon. It was in the June, the month of June. And on my phone, it had international out of area. And I thought, oh, it's a call center. <laughs> you know what it is. You've won, a, you've won a kitchen. You've won a mobile phone. It's like, oh, I, I can't be bothered with this. And I let the phone ring. And it was on its last ring, Ian, and... After university, after graduating from university, you can't get a job for love and money in, in the Northeastern marketing. 
So I, I, I did some, uh, some temporary work at a local call center. And back then, we were told that if you want to catch anybody in a good mood, get them after 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Because people are on the wind down for the weekend. They may have come, come home early. It's a good time to get them. So I knew this was a call center. So I thought, oh, Jeff, I've done this job. Just be polite. Pick up the phone. Say, I'm not interested in the kitchen. Thanks very much. And put the phone down. Just be polite. So I picked up the phone. And there was a, a you know the, the, the two-second delay. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. And a guy came on the phone. He said, can I speak to Jeff Ram? I said, speaking. He said, that's Jeff Ram. I said, I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, my name's Sepa Tarvardi, and I'm from a company called Hamiyash Farazan. What are you doing on the 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th of, no- of se- um, November? I said, sorry? And I looked at my diary. I didn't ask why. I looked at my diary. I said, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> at a PSA conference in London on the, on the Saturday or Sunday, and he wanted me for the Monday. He said, that's fine. We'll fly you out from London. I said, to where? He said, Tehran. I said, Tehran, Iran, Tehran. And, he said, yeah. and, and I was like, oh, this is a wind-up. Now, in the Northeast, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a local re- radio station called Metro, and they, have, they had somebody on in the day who just used to phone up people and wind them up rotten. And I knew what had happened. One of my mates from university, I knew exactly who it was, has phoned up the local radio station and says, hang on a second, Jeff's got his website, jeffram.com. His email is jeff at jeffram. He's getting a bit above his station. So let's bring him down a peg or two. Uh, so let's wind him up and let's create this gig. And of course, with a surname like Ram, Tehran and Iran, <laughs> it just it just fell into place. I thought, oh my word, this is, this is a joke. This is a wind up. And I know I was going out live across the airwaves so I was pretending again to, as if this happened like every day. I get inquiries like this every day. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, what, what's, the, what's the conference? And he said it's the first uh, advertising and branding conference uh, in, in Tehran. And I said, what about the audience? He said, oh, there's a thousand, there'll be a thousand people in the audience. There'll be Bank Iran, Iran Air, and there'll be lots of uh, SMEs and entrepreneurs. And we were talking about the visa, we were talking about fees, all that type of stuff. And I thought, this is this is a bit too detailed. And I thought, come on, who is this? He said, sorry? I said, who is this? Is this a wind-up? And I said, who else have you got speaking? And he, and he listed three Canadian speakers. And he said, we've also got Michael Jackson. <laughs> I said, shut up. Come on, who's which, <laughs> is this Metro Radio? And he said, "What? who's Metro? And he, point, he said, have a look at this website. And as I'm on the phone, I went to this website. Ian, the event was real. <laughs> the whole thing was real. And I went, oh, my word. I said, can I, call, can I call you back on Monday? I need to check a couple of things out in that week. Can I call you back on Monday? And Monday came. I rang. I said I can do it. I had never been to Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester, Glasgow, anywhere in the UK apart from Carlisle in the Northeast. My very first outside of the northeast was speaking to a thousand Iranians simultaneous translation all on headsets and it was the greatest conference and honestly Ian, it was the week that changed my business life sure so yeah. you went like to a thousand though from what what had you done before hundreds obviously um yeah hundred twenty yeah um yeah. maybe it's a hundred maybe it's at the Barclays events back in the day maybe it's about a hundred or so but right. that, that event, I, I promise you, I came back a different person. I came back a different sure. person. I, I now know, and, and I went with confidence. We, we've all got a fair degree of confidence, and certainly the, the, the business that I'm in, a lot of people have confidence. But I came back with belief. Yeah. And it was the belief that I'm thinking, hang on a second. My stories that I'm telling in the northeast of England and the northwest, they've just gone down such a storm in Persia, people who don't even understand my my dialect, never learn English, get it. And it was a big realization that it's it's such a small world, but the, we we have it at our doorstep if we if if we choose it. And that that week, oh sorry, that event should I say, 
I met some amazing people. Michael Jackson, who is an amazing speaker from South Africa. He's one of my very, very best friends. Uh, I stay there a lot when I speak in South Africa. He's coming up to the Northeast in June uh, of this year, and I'll be meeting him again. So he's one of my very best friends. And um, an award was put out for the best speaker, and I won the award, Ian, uh, at the first World Advertising Forum. And I'm speaking with Michael and all these other speakers who are who've had years of experience and knowledge uh, of speaking internationally. And I won the Best Speaker Award, and it was all voted for by the audience. Uh, I have an incredible Persian handmade silk rug next door as a reminder of, of my gift that I won. And honestly, I tell this story in a lot more detail, I'll be honest with you, but I'll tell this story in colleges and universities to the future entrepreneurs of this world. And I'll say, do you know what? All the things that have happened to, in my career over the last eight years come down to one thing. I picked up the phone and I said yes. And there will be opportunities that will come your way on an email. And it's not always Nigerian princes want to give you $3 million. You know, there are other opportunities as well. <laughs> but there, there'll, be, there'll be phone calls and somebody will offer you something. Something will happen. And you've got, you've got two choices. One, you pick up the phone. Two, you can say no. Or the third one, you can say yes. And it's that yes that you will you have no idea where that could take you. No idea. You know what it is, Jeff? I had this conversation yesterday, actually. Um, I met a friend in a coffee shop and we just bumped into each other and he was writing his slides for a, for a gig he's doing. And we spoke about imposter syndrome, you know, and, and maybe getting that game face on. So <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing at did, did that? Did that come on? You know, did you think, my God, am I, you know, did they really want me? What am I going to do? You, you get in front of a thousand people. You know, we, you would have been nervous, eh? It, you don't portray that nervousness in your oh, face. You just no, put your mask on. No, my word. I mean, the, the first. I mean, this is this is what. I, 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 okay, I'll, I'll dive a bit deeper for you. Okay, so the first. So I walk into this auditorium, and it is an auditorium. It is just stunning, right? And it's 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 a it's almost like a half a coliseum. You can imagine people are gathered around over two tiers, thousand people, and it, everybody's surrounding you. The stage, the stage is the length of a of a street okay um and i did my hour every speaker did their hour there were six speakers on the conference and it was a two-day conference on the second day the same speakers come in do to the same audience but we change our our talk on the first day i deliver my hour i come off stage everybody's cheering and clapping which is very nice and then everybody picks out their mobile phone out of their pocket looks at the screen and starts pressing some buttons. And I spoke to the one of the sponsors, the Iranian sponsor who could speak English, who was sat beside me. I said, what are they doing? And there was a picture of me on the screen with four yellow buttons. And on those yellow buttons uh, was a word in Farsi. I said, what, what does that mean? He said, oh, we're all voting to see how good you were. Ah. I said, sorry? Now, when you saw me speak the other, the other week um, uh, at, at the Valued event, you know, you have evaluation forms, don't you? You have evaluation forms. What do you think of the sandwiches? What do you think of the speaker? What do you think of the parking? And then you well, have... I just I just saw people throwing knickers at you, to be honest, but I didn't see any forms. And that's just the men. Uh, <laughs> and, and and but we hide these little forms away, you know, to to the yeah. and you, you you never really get to see them unless they're really good or they're really bad. And I said, well, so what are they doing? He said, oh, we're rating how good you are. And I went, what do the buttons mean? He said, the first one says excellent. The second one says good. The third one says average. And the fourth one, how, how do you say um, weak? I said, you're joking. I said, do I get to see these results? And he just laughed in my face. He went, we all get to see these results. And literally 10 minutes later, on a bar chart, on that screen, is your instant feedback to what the audience thought of you. Wow. That is the most scariest moment in my life. Because if you, if you die, you die in public. Yeah, 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 um, and it's it was a it's very interesting what they do. I, I, it's not a great thing. It's not a bad thing. But you know what? It 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 doesn't kill you, but it it, it can make or break you. Uh, Come on, then don't be don't be modest. What was the score? So the day one, Michael Jackson was number one. I was number two. So silver medal. I was good with that silver medal. Yeah, that's right. gig. I'm happy with that. But like I say, on the second day, I did win it because I'd. They voted me number two, and Michael uh, voted me number one. Michael number two, but when they put the scores together, I was voted the best speaker. And 
the, the trophy and the award is still uh, on my shelf in my office here. Like I said, I've got a Persian rug. But more than that, it was the belief. It was the belief that you know, this, if I can do it here, I can do yeah. it anywhere in the world. And I'm now 34 individual countries in now. Um, I love to travel. I love to do what I do. And I everywhere I go throughout the world, different cultures, different countries, I'm picking up new stories, new ideas, and that's what I share with audiences. I'm not, you know, I, I don't, I don't talk about graphs and stats and chats. Uh, you know, as as you well know, I talk about the real world, the real world businesses, the real world people who make a huge difference to service, who make a great difference to marketing. But that's what inspires my audiences. So the heroes of the story are, are not me; it's the people in my stories. And wherever I travel, and I do love to travel, uh, it's wonderful to pick up these stories and take them to the next country. It is, and that's, that's a nice lead in, Jeff, to sort of where your, where your talks lead the audience and, and what sometimes emotional feelings come out because, you know, customer service, customer experience, it is quite emotive. You know, we do get quite annoyed if something's not going well or we do feel joy when something's gone amazing. What if I said to you what brands out there that really are rocking it at the moment, who you think, yeah, they're doing it right. <laughs> um, I'm going to be really biased and say some of my clients, if you don't mind. Uh, Go for your life. These are the people who I, who I meet before I speak for them. And then when I get to know what they do, it's just, just brilliant. Um, a, a client that I... Uh, uh, two, I'll, I'll give you two straight away. Um, Finair... So I worked with the ground crew and the and the and the cabin crew of Finnair in Helsinki last year. I did a two day celebrity service uh, conference with them, and just wonderful. They have what they call a Nordic experience um, on on their flights, and just wonderful. I mean, the country's wonderful. The people are, are, are fabulous. Um, but it was interesting, as as we all know the. The big United Airlines disaster, the PR disaster, the customer service disaster that happened just over a month ago. Um, you know, you, it's, it's it's incredible. You know, the, the, this this the stock fell; they lost millions, and it was actually on the same day, and it was a wonderful image. But of course, it, good news doesn't get spread as fast as the bad. That's right, and that that'll always be this always be the case, but. Um, Finnair, they, they literally had a, a, a passenger, and I, forgive me, I, I can't paraphrase because I, I, I came across this uh, just a short time ago, but around about the same time, they had a passenger, and that passenger, I think, had they had a, a child, and they had somebody else, and they had another a, sort of a baby, and technically, you, you couldn't go on with just the this amount of children and plus a, plus a baby. The baby had to be held. You couldn't just put the baby in, in a seat, so... Uh, I, I don't like I say I don't know the one hundred percent terminology, but but a pilot, an off-duty pilot who was on that flight, saw this and walked over to the mother who was travelling alone and said, "If you if you wish, I'm quite happy to hold your baby for the takeoff and landing." And a wonderful photograph was taken, and it just says everything about that brand. It just, you know, they, they look for opportunities to, to deliver that celebrity service. And it's it's a brand that I know quite quite close up. I, I met with them again two weeks ago in Helsinki. And there is just a wonderful feeling about Finnair uh, that I don't, I don't see in any other brand. Because uh, I do fly quite a lot. But that's one. The second one. Hang on, Jeff. Can I just jump in there? Do you, do you think that that's because of the of the size? So what what my question is: Ooh. once once a brand gets to a, you know a real big animal, is it hard to control? Whereas is Finnair like a decent size where you can actually control the the culture and, and the brand and the customer service? That's a good question. It's interesting because Finnair have just took on about another five hundred crew. They've taken on more. They've taken on the new three eighties. They've they've got some wonderful aircraft, and they are expanding at a rapid rate. I think that's why I was. Primarily brought in uh, last last September, um, so they are growing. Of course, they are they are smaller than your British Airways of this world and and, and Emirates and so on. Um, they still are the only ones with a one hundred percent safety record. 
Just thought I'd mention. Wow. Um, so that, <laughs> that's something else. It's interesting because you you would think when you were, if you are smaller, you can control it more. You can be more a bit independent in your decisions. Um, so I would agree with you on that. But I think I think what I would not not disagree with, but I think what I would what I would counter attack it with is they are growing at a phenomenal rate. And it's at that point that procedures come into place, policies come into place, and when you see what happened to United, you know, that was just a disaster from start to finish. Yes, they offered money for passengers to leave, but keep up on the money. Keep up on the money till somebody says, you know what, get off. Cause it yeah, was- yeah. And supposing that supposing they'd offered somebody a million dollars to get off. <laughs> <laughs> Mass exodus. It was still in a lot of problems compared to what they lost. Um, yes. But the, the size is important. I think, you know, with, with my business, it's just me. I have associates. I have bureaus. I have agents. I work in teams. I work with other speakers. But, you know, Ian, it's just me, and I love it this way. And whatever happens here with my business, something goes right, something goes wrong, I see an opportunity, I can make that decision in a nanosecond, and I can put it right, put it wrong. I can do whatever I wish. When you get to a certain size... That is when we have to ask. That is when we have to check. That is when it, you know, the independence is stripped, and the I in celebrity is independence. That is when a lot of independence. Uh, we know the right decision, but we have to ask. We have to check. You have to go through a form. You have to fill in. You have to go online. You have to call this number. And as soon as that happens, you've put another barrier to that customer, that client, getting to what they wanted. And that barrier is time. And effort, and wasted time, and wasted effort, and the bigger the business, the more I see of this. Yeah, I mean that that was my point, Jeff. You know, we were we're big fans of British bureaucracy here and paperwork and jumping through hoops. So my question to you was: so if you are a big company, is it some is it possible to change? Is it possible to become that you know amazing customer service? Of course it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we because you can. You know, you, you don't look at it as if we've got, you know, 10,000 employees. You look at it as if you've got one customer and one employee. It's it's how you shape it in your own mind. You know, that one person has an issue, has a problem. They phone you up, they email you, they, they connect with you, they come to your stand or whatever it may be. You should have license to deal with that as if, you know, to, to put the biggest smile on that person's face. It, it, and it's... It's 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 a shift. It really is a shift. One of my one of my biggest clients, and actually there's two. This one of my biggest clients, who I just think are wonderful, is Specsavers here in the UK. Yeah, and I I spoke at their conference uh, just a few months ago. Uh, so many people connected with me on LinkedIn. So many people connected with me. Um, you know, as you do on social media, and 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 we stay in touch. People who are in the audience. But it's just wonderful. The size of the business, they are the biggest, um, you know, optical uh, organization in the country. You know, the, the, the marketing is, 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 let's be honest, famous. Uh, their strap lines are famous. You know, out of nowhere, they, they created this brand. Yeah. Um, but I found that, uh, and, I, and I did a bit of mystery shopping. <laughs> it's one of the things I, I sometimes do for a client before but I, I went to their store in Washington uh, my wife and daughter have been going to their stores you know, for the last 15 years is it maybe it's even a bit longer and there is never an issue There's never, and if there is a problem they put it right and they, they keep us informed Every it's, it's almost that every branch has that independent streak to put everything right and when you when you walk in, you know you are you are led. You you're not just oh hi there, please take a seat. You are led from person to person to person. It's like a sort of a, a wonderful flow around the store. Um, you know, to see in the 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 optician, to see in the reception, to see in the the staff. It, it's just, it's a very good, pleasant, easy, and that's not a word we can use often. Experience. Um, but they, they they do it so well. And the third the third client I want to mention, and again it's it's a client that's that's growing. I think they're about eighteen years old now, and but it's actually people who I use. They, they book me. I use them for my service. It is Money Penny, and this is a call answering service. So from having spec savers and thin air, you know, very much retail and hospitality led face to face, we've now got 
So if you if you were to call my number, you were to call my office, it would get directed to Sophie and the team at Moneypenny, and it's a call answering service. They're just wonderful. They're just absolutely brilliant. As we're on the on this call now, I've got my, my, my call on divert. I tell them that I'm on divert and the reason why. And literally within seconds, Ian, they email me back. Seconds. Now, I don't expect that from any organization, but I've had that for them for some time, well, since the day I started. But I need to tell you about the culture. Have we got, have we got a few minutes to tell you about the culture? Jeff, we've got stacks of time because I'm, I'm enjoying this. Can I just, I'm just going to kind of reiterate something you've just said there across the last three brands. So basically what you're saying is you don't have to be an agile SME to change. It's possible that if you're a large organization, you can bring this service into play. Yes. Yeah. And, and it, as an individual, it's a lot easier for you and I if we're solopreneurs, solopreneurs. Do, do, you, do you like that name? It's a bit strange. Um, do you know, do you, don't get me started on solopreneurs, millennials, and coaches. I'll, I'll just I'll go into a rant. <laughs> millennials, millennials. That's, that's the future. Right? I was, I, dear me, I, I, oh, what jargon, what, what silliness. Um, no, it, it's it's a lot easier for us. It's an awful lot easier for us. The hard part for us is sometimes it's coming up with the ideas that will consistently deliver that level of high levels of service because it is just us so you need sometimes you do need to bounce it around a team or a department and part of the things that i do in my my sessions my keynotes and i also do interactive workshops as well and you've got a flavor of that when you saw me the other week is i do something called the two minute challenge where you take one of your customer touch points and you give it the celebrity service treatment if a celebrity were to come into our business tomorrow if we were to do this what would we say? What would we do? How would we react? And I give people the two-minute challenge, and it's within those 120 seconds that we can create the ideas. It's harder when you're an owner-manager. It's a lot easier when you're in a in an organization. But it's these ideas that constantly bring and keep us fresh in the marketplace in our customers' eyes. And this is the bit that excites me more than anything, the two-minute challenges after my talks, because... This is when we start to reap our own creative ideas and build these into the culture of our business. Now, I walk into many organizations and I, I love having to look around. Maybe I'll go the day before and, and meet the board, meet the team, have a, have a wonder about, do a you know, bit of mystery shopping or some observations or whatever it may be. But I've done my, my research before I've gone in to do the talk. We're using Money Penny. Uh, who are based over in the, the northwest of England, in North Wales, they had just moved to a brand new, state-of-the-art, purpose-built headquarters, okay? Let me run through you, because it's in, it's in my talk, I've done it a few times now, and people are just like, wow. Uh, Richard Branson said it, said it best when he said, you know, customer service doesn't start with a customer, it starts with your employees. Okay. If you get that right first. The, the, the service that you can provide to your, to your customers is easy. And I, and I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, so let's get it right for, for the staff. Creating that culture. Honestly, Ian, when I walked into Money Penny um, at, at the beginning of the year, I'd never seen such a happy, um, I'd, I'd never seen such a, an atmosphere like it. Everybody was was buzzing. Everybody was just looked happy, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? Because this <laughs> is, this is normally reserved for five past five on a Friday afternoon when people are leaving for the weekend, you know. But everybody was happy. I was like, well, this is this is bizarre because you don't really get that in an organisation, you know. But everybody was like, oh, it's as if some, it's as if they were all had some sort of drug intake before I arrived. That's the impact, right? But let me tell you what I saw. So I walk up, I park the car, walk up, and you come into this uh, sort of porchway area. On the left-hand side is a plaque, right? And on this plaque is inscribed, here are all of the people uh, who make this company uh, as amazing as it is. All the people from Money Penny. On that wall are hundreds of names, all in the wall. Hundreds. Everybody who's ever worked there, Ian, whether it be a day, a week, a year, or however long, is on that wall because they all contributed to that organization. Now, this type of 
memorial is safe for people who are dead, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know you're special is after you're dead. Well, you know special because you, you can't see it. You're dead. This is – so when you walk in, your name's on the wall because you are making that contribution to making this company great. I mean, how good does that make you feel when you walk in? It's incredible. On the other side of, of the foyer area, on the other wall – are also a list of names. The names aren't as long as the ones on the left-hand side of the wall, but on the right-hand side, all of the people who have been there 10 years. It's almost like a testimonial wall. Sure. So you've been there 10 years, you get to you get to go on that wall, and your name is on that wall. How stunning is that? You know, if you've got somebody, and, and, and all the people I was talking to at, at the event, they're all talking about, I said, how long have you been here? Oh, eight years. I've only got another two years before I go on the other wall. People were looking forward to spending more time at work. <laughs> and it's, it's, it was just wonderful. Inside uh, the coffee area, the, the workstations, it is just like a home from home. But this is what they did. And this is, the, this is the beauty. This is the wonderful thing about putting your staff first to deliver service. The team... The MD and the, the you know the whole management team before they moved in went round all of their staff and said for your new headquarters what would you like what would you like in your new office this is your business this is your place of work we want to make it the best and of course everybody then starts filling in this form and hands hands in their ideas and here's just a few of them right they said we don't want normal toilets we want something quite homely. So the doors and the toilet are like your old front door, like, your, you know, the red and green and blue painted front door, like the old, it's a bit like, you know, the Notting Hill door, the blue one? Yeah. yeah. It's like that. So it's very homely. when you Just when you go to the loo, it's home. Yeah. Um, oh, there are so many things, but the best, I'll leave you with this, because I could talk all day about Money Penny. I'll leave you with this one. And you could just imagine somebody writing this idea down on the feedback form, going back to the MD, you're thinking, you know what, I could get the sack for this. Uh, or they're going to they're gonna think I'm, I'm crazy. But they wrote it down, and Money Penny did it. Inside their headquarters is a pub. <laughs> My word. And right now, all of your listeners on this is like, I need to go to this office. I need to go see this. It's called a pub, and uh, for Cockney rhyming slang, you know the the, uh, the the rhymes that we have in in the UK, certainly in London, uh, they called the pub the Dog and Bone, which is rhyming slang for fawn. So they called it the Dog and Bone, which was a brilliant, brilliant twist. But inside this pub, you know, obviously there's the uh, you know the football. There's the chairs, there's the tables, there's a pub. It's, it is beautifully done out. And there is a bar. There's a bar area. But it's manned and owned and run by the staff. It's run wow. by the people who are there. They don't bring anybody in. There's no, there's no bar manager. It's run by the people. So you, if so, Ian, you and I work there. Um, Ian, I could quite fancy some cider for, for, t- for tonight. You just stock cider, put it in the fridge. You've bought it from a cash and carry. And we, we charge what it costs. You don't have to make money on something that is there for the staff. Yeah. But what happens? And this is the another beauty. So everybody wants to work there longer to get on the wall. Okay. But people don't want to go home. <laughs> you finish work at, let's say, you finish work at four o'clock. And a couple of your friends in the same station are going up at four o'clock. Um, do you fancy a quick drink? Yeah, come on, let's have a quick drink. We'll have a, we'll have a chat. We'll have a catch up. So they go to the bar. They, they pay cost price for the alcohol. They sit down. They have a couple of drinks. They have a time, and they get a taxi home. It's just mm. it's just extraordinary. From thin air to um, to spec savers to to money penny. I am very privileged in, in what I do. Uh, it's it is an honour to 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 speak for such brands because I look at them and I think, wow. And if I can add any extra dimension of celebrity service on top of what they're already doing, then that is a that is quite a potent cocktail. That's really interesting, Jeff. So basically what you're saying is to give celebrity service to your actual customers, to your clients, it all starts in the office with your teams around culture. Yeah. 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 Uh, not not every organization is like this, money penny. Yeah, yeah. 
is the biggest one, I promise you, the biggest one by far that I've ever seen go to this level. Um, the uh, Actually, what I was going to say, um, Casato. Casato, also in the northwest of England, based in Bolton. Casato right. are the prams and buggies. And oh, yeah, yeah. Again, a wonderful, wonderful organisation. They have... They have a huge slide going from one level to the to the bottom level. <laughs> a slide that obviously, you know, staff just have got to go down. So from the moment you sit on it, from the moment you get down, you've got a smile on your face before you've gone into the next meeting. <laughs> um, you're you're going to get me on my famous rant about Redfeld pool table shortly because uh, yes. it's, it's, it's a bugbear of mine going into an organisation, and that's that's that culture box ticked. Yeah. I mean, I think every you know, it, it, it's 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 funny you know the we've all been to an advertising agency and they all talk about being creative and yet yeah. every one of them has a has a dog every one <laughs> they, you do, don't they? they have dressed down every day and yeah. um, they 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 have the same stuff in every office and I'm like you're the most uncreative lot I've ever known in my life. Yes, and one. I'll, I'll quickly tell you this about Casato. I was there for their conference. It must be two years ago now, and they they gave out awards. And was it monthly or quarterly? You'll have to forgive me, but they they do this regularly, and they they give out awards. And the awards are, uh, you know, I'll I'll nominate Ian for best whatever this month. I'll nominate, and there's some fun ones in there, but there's actually. There must have been 50 awards, right? But all on the floor are prizes, right? And I'm talking toasters, bottles of wine, chocolates, you name it. Just a host of prizes. But so many of the teams, you know, were were read out what they'd achieved, what they'd done. This isn't sales figures. This is just the, the impact that they have with clients, the impact they have with the team. And they just reward each other. Um, and this must have gone on for 40 minutes, and I just smiled constantly at the back of the room, and I was thinking, you know what? I wasn't self-employed. I want to work here. I want to work yeah. for now. I want to work for Specsavers. This is the thing that that, that I love more more than anything. I, I see organizations. I think it's the, bit that, that, that the only thing that I miss about what I do is, is some of these organizations that I see, but it is rare, Ian. It's very rare. But the, the, the awards that they did was wonderful, um, and – Again, a very, very, very happy, motivated team who are ready to deliver that service. It's really refreshing, isn't it, to see companies doing this now from back in the day when our parents are working. I mean, my my grandfather was a coal miner and, you know, he grafted hard and had a pint on on the way home. But, you know, these guys didn't live long. They were in bad conditions. And now, wow, we're just doing some amazing stuff to keep people happy. I mean, we all know you spend so much time at work. We see our colleagues more than our spouses. It's just, it's good. It's just great. But what what would you say, Jeff, to people now who are growing a business and they want to aspire to be that? And maybe money is is a factor to stop them doing things like that. What what sort of easy hits could you do? I know I put you on the spot there. Ooh, uh, what, what do you mean money's a factor? So when you've got a you've got a, a sort of you know a, a grown SME for instance, so it's been owner managed, they've scaled up, they've brought in five, they've brought in ten, they're getting to fifteen, and they're still on you know really tight in terms of finances. You know, um, what what kind of things could could they do to to increase the culture and and, and their staff happiness? You know, the first thing, the obvious thing, and I'm going to go right back to the basics of business. Go and ask them. Okay, cool. Go and ask them. You know, yeah. Uh, just uh, you know, just like uh, if I, I'll go back to the money penny example. I think if they went and said we're going to have some doors for you know that are going to look like your home on the toilets. We're going to have like an iPad thing where you press the button and coffee comes out, and we're going to have a pub inside. Everybody would have thought, oh, that's really good, but it's not their idea. It doesn't belong to them. They haven't created it. They haven't thought of it. They haven't put it forward. If we were to ask, first and foremost, what would you love in this office, in this business, to put the biggest smile on your face? I bet you the first thing that people wouldn't say would, I want a pay rise. I want short rise. I bet it's not. I'd put money on it that it's not. It would be something absolutely simple. 
that's going to make them deliver a greater service. And first thing I'll do is ask. Um, but also, you know, not, I'm not saying look at the competition. My word, I've never looked at the competition. What's the point of looking at somebody who's trying to copy you? Uh, you look, you're going to look like the same version of yourself in, in no time. But also, you know, take these field trips. I mean, I've mentioned four brands here today. Um, I'm sure if, if some of your listeners picked up the phone and said, look, I've just been on Ian, Ian's uh, podcast. I heard Jeff Ram, he was raving about you. Is there any chance me and, me and a couple of people could just have 10 minutes with you and come and see what you do? Because I've just skimmed the surface of what's happening behind these walls. Um you know, I don't think there's any business in the world would 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 refuse your entry and and, and help. I just don't, don't. If you want to be inspired, ask your staff. Constantly seek out the ideas. Use the two minute challenge if you wish, but also look around and who are the who are the people out there that are that are doing it differently. Now, here's one of my biggest bugbears, right? And it happens at every conference. It happened this week in London. If I hear the word Amazon or Apple, or Steve Jobs, once more, I'm going to go, I'm going to go crazy, right? Agreed. When we talk about creativity, when we talk about product, when we talk, Uber, Airbnb, shut up, seriously, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I hear the same four or five brands mentioned by every speaker at every conference I've ever gone to, and then, oh, here's a picture of Steve Jobs on the screen. Seriously, you never worked with him, so he doesn't know you, so just have your own material. Anyhow, that's my bugbear, right? <laughs> But we we go around and it's we go around the same circle of Amazon and the service and the da 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 and Uber and oh they don't own taxis but you can order an Uber uh, and you can you know and, and look at what Apple do when you go in the Apple store honestly Ian these aren't the best brands that I've ever seen deliver service sure I've had some horrible Uber drivers who have yeah yeah who have had to pay ten quid for who have been rude who have been ignorant I've had. Amazon orders go missing. I've had to chase up. Um, we just get we just get embroiled in what we think is good because they they you know in the, in the top fifty companies in the world. You've been charged ninety quid for a couple of Apple connectors. <laughs> Don't even go there. Don't even go there. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I use Amazon. I use about use all of these. But if you want, if an organisation listening to this podcast right now really wants to stand up from the crowd. Stop looking at the brands that everybody's looking at just trying to stay out, you know, out of the competition because you will end up looking the same. And this is, this is what I think. Knock on the door of these people that I've just mentioned and yeah. might see how they do it because it's, it's those areas there that, that, that excite me most because the ideas that, that can change our culture, that can change our service that we're delivering to clients, they do not cost money. I promise you this, you do not have to cut, it doesn't cost you money. The, the only expense, and I mentioned this during my talk uh, when, we, when we met the other week, the only expense I ever go to, really, really go to, is it, uh, I, I choose Christmas as an example. I send out Christmas presents to my clients. Big, pre- different, pre- you know, very creative, but I do it and I and I hand make them, I, I parcel them up, and I send them to the clients all over the world. It's a question that I'll ask everybody on this on this podcast right now. What did you send your last client or customer? What gift did you give them as a thank you for their business? What is it you give them? Now we're all different. We're all different, but, you know, so please take this any which way you wish. But all I do is I reinvest some of the profits that I make in that year back into the client at the end of the year. And all I do is say, thank you so much for your business. Here's a little something that I thought you might like. And you know what? It could be a book. It could be, uh, it, it could be, it could be whatever. It could be, uh, I, I send huge boxes of chocolates because many people who book me are in teams and it's good to share all that around. Um, but reinvest the profits. I think when we, when we talk about customer service, is it going to cost money? Well, hang on a second. We're going to spend thousands on that advert. We're going to spend tens of thousands on that website. Yeah. How can we just reinvest a portion, a percentage of the profit. This is profit mind not an expense, back into the client. Are they more likely or less likely to choose you in 2018? That's the question, the the final question 
that I would ask, that everybody else should ask, is it more likely or less likely that they will continue to use you, refer you, and give you more business in the coming year? And if the answer is more likely, you know what to do. Well, Jeff, we've got some call to actions there. So we've got that one. I've just made a note here. You mentioned about asking the the staff. That's a good good place to start. Absolutely. You know, communicate, go and visit, see what see what other people's coaches are like and how maybe you might be able to learn from them. Yes. I'm gonna say this again. Stop, collaborate, and listen. I'm gonna have to get a t shirt, a vanilla ice t shirt, because I'm all over this now. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming my bit of a mantra here but collaboration you know yeah definitely go out and see people talk i don't think people talk enough now when it comes to um businesses i think they're quite insular and they don't want to share stuff it's so yeah open the door and let them in yeah i think yeah and i think the only i think the I, I totally agree with what you're saying there i think the the majority of talking we do and is trying to sell at a networking event yeah where you can you know you you came across me from a blog that i wrote on linkedin and he said, I can't believe it. We're just 4.1 miles away. Uh, and I said, all right, let's, let's let's get together. And I said to you, I've got an event coming up. Why don't you come along? You came along. We had a couple of selfies. We've we've arranged this, which I I promise you, I, I, I really am grateful for. So thank you. Um, and you haven't sold me anything. I haven't sold you anything. We don't need to do that. We can talk about ideas. We, we, we'll meet up in the pub in, in, in the coming weeks. I just think when we go to networking events and exhibitions, we, we're there for a purpose of gaining more business. And if we were to twist that just just once this year, if we were to twist this and say, I'm going to go there to learn something that can help my business, and you keep your business cards firmly in your pocket, <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what impact that might have compared to trying to sell somebody three widgets. I wonder what impact that would have. Brilliant. Well, mate, that's a class place to leave it. And that's a little bit food for thought for our listeners. So, Jeff, you've been absolutely amazing again. I know if anyone wants to know more about you, they can just literally Google Jeff Ram, can't they? They certainly can. They Google yeah. Jeff Ram. Uh, oh, let's, let's go down the list. If I've got over 100 videos. I think it's 116 videos on YouTube. Uh, as you know, YouTube is completely free of charge. If you type in Jeff Ram, you can subscribe, have a look at those. There's, there's a real mix of customer service and marketing ideas, a ton of stuff. Um, so on YouTube, by all means, follow me on Twitter. Come to one of my latest events. If you go to jeffram.com, which is G-E-O-F-F-R-A-M-M.com, I've got an events page. So wherever I'm speaking uh, around the world, uh, I'll put the, the dates and details on there. Um, and for anybody who wants <laughs> quite a few more ideas, whether it be marketing from OMG Marketing or customer service through Celebrity Service, I've written the trilogy, the trilogy of books. And oh, of course, yes. Are also available on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon, type in my name, Jeff Ram, you'll come across the trilogy of books. And there is an absolute, oh, there's loads of ideas in there, techniques, stories. It's all about the people. And it's all about the brands that stand out from the, from the crowd. There's no mention of Apple. There's no mention of Amazon. These, <laughs> these are the businesses around the corner. These are the businesses on the far side of the planet who are standing out from the competition. So help yourself. And, and certainly if I can help or we, we do another podcast in the future, please let me know. I'm, I'm here to help. Good stuff, Jeff. Well, yeah, we'll have you back on because um, I think this has been the longest one ever and it's because it's filled with gold, my friend. So thank you very much. Like Ant and, This is like Ant and Dex Saturday night. It's 53 minutes and four seconds. I mean, that's an hour's program. How tall are you? Six one. Oh, man, I'm just about six. So Ant and Dex, they're little fellas, aren't they? They are, but we can, we can be the business Ant and Dex. Uh, well, we're both handsome fellas, of course. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to say that, but yes, that's why we're stood behind a screen and nobody can see us. <laughs> Actually, I was going to stream this on Periscope. I'm glad we didn't know, <laughs> especially, especially us in our shorts. It's not what you want to see, is it? <laughs> okay, my friend. We shall speak soon. Cheers, Jeff. All the best, Ian. Thank you. Thank you to fellow sand dancer Jeff Ram. It's definitely worth checking out some of Jeff's videos he spoke about and watch his material because. 
it's interesting that we've heard Jeff's story there and his background, you know, how he became a speaker and that kind of stuff. But his YouTube videos are where he's really great, interesting material. So with that in this podcast, you've got enough research there for your next keynote speaker, maybe. So just Google Jeff brings up loads of cool stuff. And don't click the Jeff Ram Glaswegian fishmonger who has a penchant for PVC, though, because... I can't unsee that, unfortunately, so I don't want you to either. Um, But the rest of the links are cool. So, you lovely bunch, make sure you're subscribed. Future episodes will magically ping to your device if you are. And obviously, you've you've left a review already. So, I'm Ian Farrah. This is the Industry Angel. And thanks for listening.